country where uh, where freedom means something. Soul of the behind revolutionary rhetoric. Back in the 1970s, Asada Shakur was known as the soul of the self styled Black Liberation Army, an armed group implicated in the killings of several police officers. Two carloads, maybe uh, four people in each car, who had 12 gauge shotguns and 9mm uh, assault rifles, creep through the park area. And I heard a loud noise. Uh, I looked and I saw someone looking through the open hole in the little plexiglass wall. They then started firing 9mm rounds from a semi-automatic uh, On Thursday, she became the first woman ever to make the FBI's most wanted terrorist list. In addition, the FBI in the state of New Jersey doubled the reward for her capture to $2 million. Shakur was convicted in the May 2nd, 1973 killing of a New York, of a New Jersey uh, state trooper uh, during a shootout that left one of her fellow activists dead. Uh, she was shot twice by police during the incident. In 1979, she managed to escape from jail and she later fled to Cuba where she received political asylum. She has long proclaimed her innocence. On third... I believe that it. it's a natural right and principle of life for all people to defend themselves. I believe that years ago when I was a Panther, I believe that when I got exposed to the new organization, I believe it now. Um, Self-defense is a natural right, you know, and no one can take that away from you. African Americans have been in the hells of North America for too long. America is a burning house. And right now, we need radical thoughts, radical ideas, radical beliefs, a radical education, and radical actions. By any means necessary. Descendants of them slaves. I'm a, I'm an African American. 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 Outlaw my language, my God in the drum. Destroyed my path, don't know where I come from. Then they created law, so wealth I had none. Nation, citizenship, housing, none. Stuck in the box with nowhere to run. Bread for sports and entertainment, bro, that's no fun. We the food for the elite. We the meat and the bun Red line resources and forced to the slums No historical memory so now I'm dumb I'm African and Israelite, Asiatic Black and Negro, even Aboriginal I still keep going and you can still call me more This system's evil, nefarious to the core Taking out our leaders, blocking all doors But there's always people that take charge and break down doors People like our parents and teachers, mine's and yours Mumia Abu-Jamal, Fred Hampton, H. Rap Brown Superhero Heroes, Black Panthers with the crown, Denmark Vesey, Gabriel Prasa, raised against the machine, our best plan and offer. But you must know it's the system that's the problem. Don't blame the man and don't blame the woman. We need both to tear down these corrupt structures. Let's use our ideas together. Put this plan in motion. Cause I'm an African American. I'm an African American. 
I'm an African American. I'm an African American. Whips and chains, rape and blame. Death and graves, poverty and pain. Displacement of family, abuse is all the same. They gave me brand name and then they took my name. This the everyday plight of them descendants of them slaves. The everyday plight of the descendants of them slaves. I'm a, I'm an African American. I'm a, I'm an African American. Welcome to Black Radical. I named this project Black Radical because Black Radical thoughts, Black Radical ideas, Black Radical beliefs, Black Radical heroes, and Black Radical action has been removed from the minds of Blacks all around the world, especially Black Americans. Now what is Radical? What does that mean? As you see, Radical is a root part, so it deals with the root. It is a tenet or basic principle. It, it is a root. Now, it is also something that is gonna be extremely different than the tradition, extremely different than normal everyday life. So if you look at this root right here, can you tell what it is? No, but one thing you can tell is that it's dirty, it's dark, and it's gonna be underground, right? Now look, this was, this is the root or bulb of a tulip flower. Now the flower looks extremely different than the root. That's what radical is. But do we need this root so that we can appreciate this flower one day? Yes, we do. And this is the problem, that the black radical or black root of our existence has been removed from the media and from the educational system. Therefore, black radical thoughts, ideas, and actions are not at the forefront of our mind. We cannot quickly name 10 or 12 um, African-American insurrections or black insurrections. Most of us can't do that. Most of us can't go past uh, uh, Malcolm X and Nat Turner. And, and that's understandable because this type of information has been taken from us without the knowledge of black radical thoughts and actions, then blacks really don't understand the fundamental nature of who they are and what they have come from. This is why the history of our ancestors are so important so we can understand what they did so that we can build upon what they did. But remove that foundation, we're only left with contemporary thinking that is controlled by the media and educational system. So in this project, you're going to be exposed to a lot of black radical thoughts and behaviors and it's going to seem extreme because remember that's what radical is that's what a root is you look at the root remember it looks extremely different than the flower but it is the thing that allows that flower to grow march 8th 1971 muhammad ali versus joe frazier fight number one Two undefeated, powerful men battling it out for the heavyweight championship of the world. Providing great cover for some courageous activists to break into an FBI office and reveal what the black community already knew, that the government had secret programs to make sure the black radical never rises up and connects with the people again. King, there's only one thing for you to do. You know what it is. This is an anonymous letter sent by the FBI to Martin Luther King, urging him to commit suicide. He was one of the primary targets of the FBI's illegal surveillance program in the 1960s called COINTELPRO, the counterintelligence program, which targeted many civil rights groups, such as the Black Panthers and the American Indian Movement. And activists like Stokely Carmichael and Malcolm X for more than a decade. The purpose was to Expose, disrupt, misdirect, discredit, or otherwise neutralize the possible threats against the existing order. The program was exposed in 1971 when a group of activists stole documents from an FBI office on the night of the Muhammad Ali Joe Frazier fight and leaked them to the press. Today, COINTELPRO is something people recall from the past as the darkest FBI program exposed so far. 
There was a national campaign to destroy the Black Panthers by infiltration, arrest, and murder, designed and carried out by the White House and J. Edgar Hoover's FBI. This program killed 38 Panthers. The FBI mandate was to disrupt and destroy the Black Panther Party, including by fabricating evidence and perjured testimony. From May 1967 to December 19... We're going to start with the Black Power Movement because this, I know for sure, is left out of the school curriculum. And one of the biggest reasons why is because this is a big pan-Africanist nationalist movement. This movement includes a lot of black radicals that was advocating for the self-determination of black people. I want to first say, I want to look at it this way. What was the black power movement? I'm giving basic stuff, family. Um, what was it? Well, it was a social political movement uh, during the uh, mid 60s to mid 70s and it was uh, fundamentally a black nationalist movement with elements of pan-Africanism and elements of socialism but it was fundamentally black nationalist um, when did it occur? well that is up for debate. Some black power movement scholars will say that it started in about 1966 because they're basing their chronology on when Stokely Carmichael issued that call publicly, the chant, black, we want black power, we want black power. And put it on par with others. Right. Um, I kind of disagree with it. I like to place the Black Power Movement as having started around 1964. And the reason I say 64 and not, not 66 is because 1964 is when Brother Malcolm and uh, several other Harlem uh, activists and intellectuals started the organization of Afro-American unity. Malcolm had come back uh, from one of his two or three visits to Africa in 64. Number one, the establishment, the organization of Afro-American unity shall include all people of African descent in the Western Hemisphere. In essence, what it is thinking, instead of you and me running around here seeking allies in our struggle for freedom, in the Irish neighborhood, or the Jewish neighborhood, or the Italian neighborhood, we need to we need to seek some allies among people who look something like we do. Number two, self-defense. Since self-preservation is the first law of nature, we assert the Afro-Americans' right to self-defense. The Constitution of the United States of America clearly affirms the right of every American citizen to bear arms. And, as Americans, we will not give up a single right guaranteed under the Constitution. And during that visit, he was meeting with African heads of state. And in some of these meetings, they were challenging, right, his understanding of nationalism, his understanding of what it means to be African. Who's included in Africa? Is it just the people who look black or, you know? So he was actually offered jobs by Kwame Kuma Abdul Nasser, who begged him to stay in Africa and not return to the United States where they were certain he would be killed. No nation could have made Malcolm quite the way he is, the work he was. And no nation could have destroyed him with the same ruthless uniqueness. That he is a product of American oppression. And that no nation oppressed quite the same way the New United America States oppressed. And no nation destroyed its oppressed quite the same way. And we're dealing with a unique phenomenon in history 
And yet, when we address ourselves as Malcolm X, relationship to radicalism and to radical social thought and radical action among African people, we are dealing with a personality that we have met many times on the roads of our history. The whites cut out. They flee to the suburbs. And the community that you thought you were integrating soon becomes another all-black slum, another all-black ghetto. It might have been whipped up by militant, anti-white black Muslims. It might have been poverty. That we should control the politics and the politicians in the community where we live. We should control the businesses and create employment opportunities for ourselves and the social philosophy of black uh, nationalism only means that we should do something to uplift the standard and the level of our own society. We should not be shocked that our people and youth love guns and gangster rappers because we live in a country built on gangsterism and the use of guns. So we need to look at why they love these things. And it's because these gangster rappers are at least attempting to stand up for themselves and all people respect those people that stand up for themselves and we respect those people that are willing to die for their own principles whatever those principles are because that's what america was built upon violence gangsterism protecting territory expanding territory even though um these so-called hip-hop gangsters may not be principled in the way that we like we should understand why our youth are attracted to them look at why many young black men are attracted to malcolm x it's because he wasn't saying we need to hold hands and sing kumbaya he was saying we need freedom and independence by any means necessary even if that is violent in self-defense A lot of people want to credit Malcolm X or even the Black Panthers and Huey P. Newton with being the first people to advocate for self-defense and using guns to defend oneself. The police are, are uh, suppressing, repressing uh, the white revolutionaries as well as the blacks who uh, speak of and who are attempting to attain uh, liberation. So. Uh, I am not standing for violence, uh, but I do stand for self-defense. Clearly this is an old idea, and one of the oldest African Americans to advocate for this, use the NRA and laws to actually uh, use guns as a means of self-defense is uh, Robert F. Williams. Robert F. Williams, one of our forgotten heroes but he'll be remembered today. He was the president of the Monroe, North Carolina chapter of the NAACP in the 50s into the 1961. He promoted armed black self-defense in the United States at a time when this was unheard of. Williams obtained a charter from the National Rifle Association and set up a rifle club to defend blacks in Jonesboro from the KKK. Robert F. Williams was fearless and he will not be forgotten. The reason that self-defense is so important to African Americans is because all people need to be able to protect themselves. And after slavery, the value of a black body is zero, it's negative. So now it is beneficial for whites to lynch them. And the reason that they killed and lynched blacks was to scare them into not voting, scare them into not be self-determined and to gain power, specifically political and economic power. So the KKK and other white supremacist groups lynched blacks to scare them from voting. So if blacks needed to be able to protect themselves if the law was not going to do it because blacks were lynched and whites got away with it. People were not being prosecuted and sent to jail to discourage the lynchings. So blacks needed to be able to protect themselves if the very government that is supposed to protect them refused. That's why this was so important. That's why it's important for people to be able to protect themselves. 
also you're going to see mob violence against the people who have little to no political power. That's why this is so important. The local NAACP president, Robert Williams, created headlines when he said, sometimes violence must be met with violence. What I would recommend that they do from then on. And so I recommended that, that they meet violence with violence, that uh, Negroes must be prepared to repulse attacks, that they must be willing to fight, that they must be willing to die and to kill if necessary, that uh, there was no law or no 14th Amendment uh, to the United States Constitution of equal protection in the South, and that therefore they didn't have any deterrent, so they would have to create the, the, the deterrent force themselves by making violence. That's intentional. They didn't want uh, minorities to get the impression that that was a way of dealing with some of the problems. That's the way countries all over the world deal with problems. But they didn't want us to get the idea. They wanted us also to feel inferior, less than men, because they know that men will stand up and fight, that men will fight for their rights and for their families and for their homes in defense of their homes. But we were supposed to be less than men. The next thing is that what is not commonly known is that the deacons of self-defense from uh, Amanda, Louisiana, and... 64, the desegregation of Jonesboro, Louisiana High School was threatened by local authorities with fire hoses. Four armed black men arrived with loaded shotguns. Without firing a shot, the mob dispersed and the authorities retreated. The students entered the school without incident. Those men were members of the Deacons for Defense, an armed citizens militia founded in Jonesboro, Louisiana. The uh, also, that the all of the radical groups, even uh, SNCC, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, the Panthers, they all got their inspiration from Monroe. It, that's documented in my FBI files. Malcolm X, Robert F. Williams, Huey P. Newton were not the only strong black males in this black power movement. We also had Fred Hampton, Chairman Fred Hampton, who was murdered while in Chicago in his own home by the police. Her lap as she describes how his father was killed. When I came into the room, I started shaking the chairman. The chairman, chairman, wake up, the pigs was laughing. Still half asleep. I looked up and I saw bullets coming from it looked like the front of the apartment from the kitchen area. And they were the pigs were just shooting. This is really damn violent, man, and they, they set up this problem in order to exploit me and other people like me. And why they want to get rid of me because I'm saying something that might wake up some other exploited people and some other oppressed people. And if all these people ever get together, then these things that are exploiting us, we'll be able to run into the lake. That's why they want to get rid of us. So we say, we always say to Black Panther Party that they can do anything they want to to us. We might not be back. I might be in jail. I might be anywhere. But when I leave, you can remember I said with the last words on my lips that I am a revolution. We also have another strong black leader, Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad, out of the Nation of Islam, who came up under the tutelage of Brother Louis Farrakhan. We will throw temper tantrums on the radio and on the television, and we will have rallies all over the place, but he has not contemplated that we will kill his ass if he murders Mumia and Abu Jamal. He has not calculated that. The white man understands that, buddy. 
say, Gee whiz, can we talk? Can we discuss this thing? There must be something we can do. Can we work it out? You can't make demands. You've got the power, black man. You've got the power, black woman. You've got the power, young black man and woman. If you can drive by and shoot your brother or your sister sitting on the porch, if you can drive by and kill their grandma and their grandpa and their uncle and their aunt and shoot the baby in the crib, then how come you can't shoot this goddamn cracker and free our political prison? Yeah, most people don't know. I, you know, Pilot was one of those individuals I actually ran with. Um, as well as Steve Copley, one of those individuals I kind of ran with. Um, if you listen to my early lectures, you see the Steve Copley research and you hear Khaled. You understand what I'm saying? Um, I grew up without a dad, so when you talk about a strong individual to mo model yourself after, definitely Khaled was one of those individuals that played that kind of role. And my Khaled was fearless, man. Just one of those kind of individuals. When I say fearless, I don't want people to think just physical because he had a presence. Shiny, bald head, black man who, do you understand what I'm saying? But when he spoke, did you see him on the Donahue show? This is uh, Khalid Muhammad, former national representative of uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan of the Nation of Islam. Six people on a commuter train. I love Colin Ferguson just as much as the masses of white Americans love General Schwarzkopf, General Westmoreland, General Patton, General MacArthur, and Eisenhower. America awards her killers, and they get ribbons and stripes and bars. I'm sensitive to the pain and suffering of the loss of life on that train, but I'm one of the rebellious slaves. And so when black people stand up out of pain and suffering and frustration, I understand after 500 years. You also, are you an entertainer or are you a committed person to uh, black people? I'm so glad you asked that question. I believe that the liberation and salvation of the black nation must be brought about by black people gaining a thorough knowledge of self after our 500 to 6,000 year holocaust where we have lost over 600 million. And so I believe that that education process must be a process of two steps, inspiration and information. So I seriously give information, but black people are a people of rhythm and spirit. So I also give inspiration <laughs> sitting down calm but fearless you understand what i'm saying broke down complex things in simple terms which most wise people can do it don't take a whole big long paragraph that's why when you see quotes it's only one a half a sentence or maybe not even full sentences you understand what I'm saying? because they want you to remember it and make it applicable to your life Khaled was a master you're also going to hear from other strong, uh, radical black leaders such as Stokely Carmichael, who later changed his name to Kwame Ture. Uh, Stokely, born in Trinidad, uh, was a part of CORE, was a part of SNCC, and then a part of the All-African Revolutionary Party. And after um, Stokely or Kwame Ture left SNCC, uh, H. Rap Brown, uh, became the chairman of SNCC. Question the values of this society. And I maintain that black people are the best people to do that because we have been excluded from that society. And the question is, we ought to think whether or not we want to become a part of that society. That's what we want to do. And that, that is precisely what it seems to me that the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee is doing. We are raising questions about this country. I 
I do not want to be a part of the American pie. The American pie means raping South Africa, beating Vietnam, beating South America, raping the Philippines, raping every country you've been in. I don't want any of your blood money. I don't want it. Don't want to be part of that system. And the question is, how do we raise those questions? You're going to hear from H. Rap Brown. And then oppress people in this country. Politics. We have to have a reevaluation of politics. See, we've been taught to think that when the word politics is mentioned, that we're talking about Democratic and Republican Party. That's not the case. See, politics concerns everything that you do. Everything that happens in your life is political. The real question is, what, whose political end does it serve? If it does not serve your political end, then it is not beneficial for you to be political in that fashion. You're also going to hear from... George Jackson, a political prisoner, uh, locked up for a supposed robbery, was supposed to get one year and turned into a lot more and was murdered in prison because of his uh, revolutionary rhetoric. And then uh, after George Jackson, we're gonna end it with Asada Shakur. Uh, you know, she was a part of the Black Panther Party and the uh, Black Liberation Army. She was involved in a shootout with the New Jersey police. She actually was locked up and then was able to escape prison. Some people from the Black Liberation Army actually freed her and she was able to make it down to Cuba. So I hope you enjoyed Black Radical. Uh, when I come back with segment two, I'm gonna look more into the educational system and, and how they've taken out the black radical from the curriculum. But uh, I think we're going to have to learn to uh, reconcile ourselves with the fact that uh, uh, from the smallest unit, from the smallest cells on up, we're going to have to relate man, woman, as equal. And it won't be easy. It's got to, it's got to work itself out. But the only way it can really work itself out, I'm convinced. And uh, I should sure hope nobody mistakes this and uh, male chauvinism of any type. But I, I think the only way that the problem is going to be resolved is that women become more aggressive. And I'm not talking about aggressive in the sense of, of being counterproductive man, and disrupting. I'm talking about uh, coming up with uh, a valid, valid criticism and valid ideas and valid contributions. I come from uh, a tradition of, of women maroons, cimarrones, who uh, didn't just try to escape from oppression, but were totally mind, body, spirit committed to uh, resisting and committed to winning whether it was Nanny in Jamaica who fought uh, against uh, these enslavers, whether it was Harriet Tubman who helped to free uh, more than 700 slaves. I think I come from a, a very strong history and I simply wanted to live on this planet and to continue that tradition and to try in my little way to make my ancestors proud.